Good morning, all. How is everyone today? I just want to let you know that uh, we are uh, going to be recording all of our class meetings. And so I just wanted to disclose that to you that we are recording this meeting and I will post the recording uh, in eLearn so that if you ever want to go back and review any of our class meetings, you can do so. And so I'll send the recording link uh, via either email or I'll post it on the eLearn homepage in a news item or I may do both. So I just wanted to let you know that this meeting is being recorded. We will be starting in about one minute. I'm gonna let, I think more people are joining in. Good morning. How is everyone? This is Chemistry 1010, Chem1010, Introduction to Chemistry 1. And I am Dr. Karma Cook. I will be your instructor this semester. And so I know this is all new to everyone, including myself, having a virtual synchronous based course. And so by being virtual and synchronous, that means we will be meeting at a certain time on Mondays and Wednesdays, 11 a.m. on Mondays and Wednesdays, and our class will end at 1215. I have our course set up until 1230 so that if you want to stay around 15 minutes after class to ask any questions, you can do so. And so. What uh, I've done is I've uh, turned on captions and so that uh, the course uh, will have the captions. So as I speak, as you speak, captions is on and so you'll see the text as well. And uh, for those that joined uh, within the last minute or so, I just want to let you know uh, that this meeting and all class meetings on Mondays and Wednesdays will be recorded. And so I just wanted to make sure that I let you know that that you this meeting is being recorded and the recorded meetings will be available to you to view uh, after class. And so it takes a little bit of time for it to be ready to stream, uh, usually about 30 minutes or so after our class ends. But once uh, that link is ready, I will post the link to the recorded uh, class meeting in eLearn. And I'll normally post it in a news item and or I will email it to you. And so what I've also done with our team's meeting room site is I've created what are called channels. And those channels are like uh, specific uh, 
like sub meeting rooms and I've named them group meeting rooms. Uh, and I've made seven channels, group one through seven, and I've placed you in one of those groups. And so when we have our class meeting time, I will do some lecturing, but I would say 50% or maybe a little bit more than 50% of our class time that we'll spend in this virtual meeting room environment, we'll spend working problems and answering questions. And so you'll go into your breakout group channel room with your group members and you'll work on problems together. And then we'll come back to the general meeting room and discuss those problems, answer any questions that you may have about those problems. And so that's the purpose of these different channels that you may have noticed uh, that I have set up is those are for our private little breakout meeting rooms for you and your group members. And uh, you'll use those private breakout rooms to work problems that are in our, um, that we have in our note practice problem set for each chapter. And so, before we get deeper into Teams, I'm going to share my screen with you. And I'm going to share my screen with you showing our eLearn course homepage. So are you seeing our eLearn course homepage? Yes. Okay, thank you. So on our eLearn course homepage, I've posted several news items. And so if you haven't had a chance to do so already, please go through each of these news items read the information and the first one is just a welcome message that has the link to our Microsoft Office Teams meeting site. And so it gives you some instructions to begin the course. Some areas uh, in our eLearn site that you need to visit and information that you need to access. But before we go to the course content tab, I've also posted in this welcome message some helpful links that will help you get through uh, this big shift and change that we've had to make in going totally online and virtual for this semester. If you need Microsoft uh, Office, uh, you have to have that, of course, Access Teams and it's great for Outlook email and uh, also um, having access to Word and Excel, so on and so forth. So if you need Microsoft uh, Office 365, there's a link for you to go to get that. If you need some technical support, there's a link to tech support. And also the library will be open uh, this semester and there are computers that are designated uh, for student use in the library. So if you need to register to use a library, uh, a library computer, if you uh, know that you'll want to use it a certain day of the week, or if you want to sporadically uh, use uh, library computer services, then there's a link for you to go and to sign up because you have to sign up uh, for to reserve a library computer. So therefore, please go to that link if you think you need to go on campus and use a library computer. Your personal folders. Could you repeat that, please? I said you're displaying your personal folders on your desktop. OK, I'm not displaying. Stop 
share on And so some other news items. Are you seeing my eLearn homepage now? Yes. Okay. And so there are some other very important news items here. Uh, there's a link to the course syllabus as well as uh, a handout that gives the course schedule. And we'll take a look at the uh, course schedule and syllabus here shortly. And then registration with McGraw-Hill Connect. We're using uh, McGraw-Hill Connect uh, this semester, and we'll be using the electronic textbook, which is the uh, Chemistry in Context 10th edition. And to register for McGraw-Hill Connect, the information is shown here in this news item. Uh, the link to click on to go to and register for our course. And then if you have any uh, technical issues in registering, there's a direct link to a McGraw-Hill Connect tech support site as well. So the registration dates start today. Registration started at 12.01 a.m. this morning. And you can register through uh, next Monday, the 31st. If for some reason you need me to extend the registration dates, please let me know in an email and I can go in and change those registration dates. I do believe that McGraw-Hill Connect gives a two week um, free trial uh, for use of the site. So if you are if you are not prepared to uh, to pay and I think it's about $85 for the access to the ebook as well as the homework quizzes and the test. You can get a two week free trial uh, initially to go ahead and join the class today. And, um, and then that will get you started in the course. So you'll have those two options to pay for the course upon initial registration, or you can choose the two week free trial option. And so again, just go through uh, these other news items here on the course homepage in the news section. And another news item is my information. So if you need to get in touch with me via email, I prefer that you email me through the eLearn email system. Many of you have done so already. Thank you for those emails. And uh, however, if eLearn for some reason goes down and you can't email me through eLearn, then email me at my chattanoogastate.edu email address. Now shown in this news item is my schedule for the semester. It shows when I have class, as well as when I have virtual office hours, shown here in this peach color. If you need to uh, see me virtually to ask some questions about something uh, pertaining to our course, you can drop in to my virtual office hours at these times shown here in the peach color. My virtual office is shown here. So you just click on that link. It will take you to my virtual office. And at these specified times, I will be in my virtual office ready to assist you. Now, if these times don't work for you, if you need to see me in my virtual office outside of these times, like if you want to see me on a Saturday, and meet with me in my virtual office. I will do my best to accommodate you. 
just go to calendly.com backslash karma dash cook and you can make an appointment with me outside of my virtual office hours. And even if it's on the weekend, I will do everything I can to accommodate your request. Even if it's at 8 p.m. on a Wednesday night, if that's when you need to meet with me, I will do everything I can to accommodate you. Okay. And if you want to leave me a, a voicemail, I'm having my, this is my uh, on campus phone number, but I have those calls transferred to my home phone. So if you call my office phone, you'll get my home phone and you'll be able to get me. If I don't answer, of course, you can leave me a message. So that's how you can get in touch with me via phone, via email, via virtual office for assistance. And of course, again, here is my daily schedule. And shown here at the bottom of the home page are the college policy statements. I'm sure these are the same policies that you've probably read many times if you've been enrolled in Chat State for uh, a semester or more, you've read these policies before, or if this is your first semester at Chat State, I advise you to read over these policies concerning accessibility, um, uh, notice for services for students with disabilities, uh, refund policies, so tuition and fee adjustments and refunds, if you ever need to withdraw from uh, a course or withdraw from the college, standards of conduct, so on and so forth. So those are basic uh, college policies. And uh, if you are not familiar with them, uh, I advise you to read over them. So that's our course homepage. I, would, I will usually post a news item, at least one or two news, new news items each week. So visit the news section of the homepage um, at least a couple of times a week to stay updated on any new news items. On the right hand side of the course homepage is the calendar. The calendar will be updated with the assignment due dates. And so make sure that you're uh, visiting this calendar to make sure you're keeping up with the due dates for assignments. Chapter one homework and quizzes are due September 9th. And so keep that due date in mind and visit this page often to make sure you're not missing any due dates. And so now that we've gone over the home page for eLearn, let's go into the course content. So after you've read those news items, this is the next area you want to go to is the course content tab. And so the course content tab has each chapter. Each chapter is considered a module. And we are covering chapters one through seven of the textbook. Within each chapter, I have chapter one shown now. I will post the notes and practice work for each chapter. That will generally be the very first sub module for each chapter. I've got the first part of the chapter one notes posted now. I'll have post part two posted by midday tomorrow. And underneath where the notes and practice work are, there are introductions to each section of the ebook. And so these are not graded, but these are good to read. It kind of introduces you to each section of the textbook. So if you would like to read each of these sections prior uh, to reading uh, the electronic textbook, then that will give you a very good overview of what to expect. Um, as far as content of each section of the chapter. And then also provided are some other non graded activities. And these activities just help you check to make sure that you understand certain content areas and subject matter, uh, such as naming uh, elements and and uh, knowing the symbols of elements and how to identify compounds, how to calculate the percent composition of a certain element in a compound. So all these different activities, they are not graded, 
but they are very, very helpful in checking uh, your knowledge and understanding of those particular concepts. And so each of our chapters will be set up this way in their own modules. And so in addition to the content explanations for each chapter, the next sub module will be the homework and quizzes for that chapter. And so you click on the chapter one homework and quizzes, and here you'll have your links to the McGraw-Hill Connect. So if I click on chapter one homework, that's going to take me where I can launch my McGraw-Hill Connect assignment. And it takes me to my McGraw-Hill Connect site. So you don't have to log in to McGraw-Hill Connect directly. All you have to do is go to eLearn, go to that chapter mod sub-module where the homework and quizzes for that chapter are contained, click on the links, and once you've registered, it'll take you to the, that particular assignment. Now, if you haven't registered yet, and if you go do what I just did, go to chapter one homework and quizzes, click on the chapter one homework. If you haven't registered, it's gonna take you to the site for you to register. So that's another way to get to the registration page is to click on a McGraw-Hill Connect assignment. And if you haven't registered, it's gonna take you to the registration site. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there and just see if there are any questions in the chat box. Okay, Cameron, that's a very good one. So chapter one homework in the, do you mean the grade book, uh, Cameron, or the, I don't think there's a drop box. You mean the grade book? Yes. And so the thing is with our homeworks, you can draw, your lowest homework grade will be dropped. And we have, there are going to be seven homeworks. We have seven chapters. Your lowest homework score can, is going to be dropped and not counted against you. And so that's why Cameron right now is saying drops because um, right now everything is saying a zero in the grade book for all assignments because you haven't started any assignments yet. But once you actually do your chapter one homework, it will change to and will display your score on that homework. So if you see zeros in the grade book now, that's nothing to be alarmed about. And same thing with the chapter quizzes. You're going to do two quizzes per chapter. So a total of 14 quizzes. Your lowest two quiz scores are going to be dropped. So I bet if you go, Cameron, to the grade book and look at the quizzes section of the grade book, your first two quizzes are going to say dropped because that's how I've set the grade book up to drop your two lowest. And right now, because all of them are saying zero right now, the very first two in the list, chapter one, quiz one and chapter one, quiz two, those are going to be saying dropped right now because you haven't started those yet. OK, very good question. Let's see any other questions. In the chat box. OK, I think that was all. And so that's the course content tab of eLearn. A very important tab because that tab is going to have all of your homework and quiz and test links to connect. And it's going to also have your notes and practice work that we'll do in our virtual classroom uh, site. So what I would suggest that you do uh, for each chapter before class. Right now, of course, we're going to be on chapter one. 
We may get into a little bit of chapter one today, but we'll get deep into chapter one on Wednesday. Make sure that you download your notes for that chapter prior to class. And if you want to print, have a print copy of your notes, that's also a good thing. So that as we're discussing the notes and, and working problems, you can write directly on your printed copy of the notes. Or if you have an iPad or you want to just have an electronic copy of the notes before class, that's fine. And you can edit them electronically as well. So make sure before each class that you have your notes downloaded and or printed out. And so in addition to the course content tab, some other important tabs here are going to be the activities tab. And under the activities tab, your grade book. And so that's how you access the grade book is click down on the drop down menu for activities and then choose grades. Another um, helpful tab is the tools tab. You can uh, click that drop down menu to choose to go directly to the calendar to check on due dates and also the class list. If you want to email one of your um, group members that's uh, one of your group members in the class that you do problems with in the, the breakout channel room, then just go to the class list, find that classmate, click on their name, and it'll take you to the eLearn email system so you can email that classmate. So that's a very helpful link as well. And then also you can go directly to the email system also under tools. But the class list link lets you get directly to a specific classmate. You can click on their name and it'll automatically get you set up to send an email to them. And so that's our eLearn site. And so we've talked about how to get registered with McGraw-Hill Connect so you can have access to the ebook and so that you therefore also have access to the homeworks the quizzes, and also under the course content tab, we're going to take all of our exams electronically. So under the course content tab, if you scroll down, the very last module is tests. So that's where all of our tests will be located. And you can see that the due dates for those tests are also showing. We will have a final exam. The final exam will be during our scheduled time in the final exam schedule. Our final exam is scheduled for December 7th, which is a Monday. And it will be doing it will be during our scheduled class time. So the final exam will be between 11 a.m and 1 p.m. Now the chapter exams and the midterm is more flexibility. For example, the first chapter exam is going to cover chapters one and two. It's going to be available for you starting at midnight on September 21st and it will close at 11.59 p.m. on September 23rd. That means anytime between midnight September 21st and right before midnight on September 23rd, you can do the exam. So you can choose whenever you're ready to take the exam. But you'll have 70 minutes to do the exam. So once you start the exam, you got to finish it. But the exam will not be given during class time. It'll be done on your own time within that date and time parameter. Okay, any questions about our exams. We're going to have an exam that we call the first chapter exam that covers chapters one and two. Then we're going to have a midterm exam and the midterm exam is, exam is going to be comprehensive. It's going to cover chapters one through three. So you will have already been tested on chapters one and two, but then you're going to be tested on chapters one and two again on the midterm, but also you'll be tested 
on chapter three on the midterm as well. Then the second chapter exam is going to cover chapters four and five. The third chapter exam is going to cover chapters six and seven. And then the final exam will be comprehensive. It will cover all seven chapters. So any questions about the exams? Good question, Whitney. Now, when you click on Teams over here on the left hand side of our screen, do the channels come up? Give me one minute. I'm going to see if I can get the channels to come up. Okay. 
OK, I'm sharing an Excel file. That I'm listing the different groups. So note which group you're in. And so when we go into uh, breakout room problem solving, this is which channel or group that you will join. I, can, I can't really see it, it's really blurry. Okay, let's see if I can. Is that better? Uh, uh, yeah, I can see it a little bit better, but I don't know if if anybody else can. Okay. I'm going to see if I can. I'm going to share the whiteboard. Uh, I was going to try a copy and paste, but that didn't go too well. So I'm going to have to copy them one group at a time onto the whiteboard. Give me one second. So this is group one. Group two shown there. So those that are in groups one, two, and three, please note your group number before I erase. So group three is Kennedy, Gavin, Jocelyn, and Megan Temple. Group two, Piper, Cameron, Gabrielle, and Keila. And feel free to, to draw on the whiteboard, try out the tools, because I may put a problem up and I may ask for a volunteer to work it for us and you'll you should be able to use these pen tools click on a pen and draw so see if you can do that.
So I've got group four showing. Well, I am trying to use the eraser. So group five is Madison Palmer, Kirsten Humble, Tessa Monroe, and Harold Jackson. Group six, Destiny McCoy, Whitney McConnell, Carlos Jimenez, and Martel Jones. And then finally, group seven, group seven, I'll get that posted here. Nicole LeBran, Kylie Lynch, Caitlin Lynn, Ewan Manalo, and Jaden McClung. You are group seven. So now that now that we've got our group assignments, so now let's work on accessing those groups. If you click on Teams, it should take you back to a Kim 101 Fall 2020, and you should see General, Group One, Group Two, so on and so forth. So try clicking on your group channel and see if it, it takes you to a new meeting room. But at the same time, it shouldn't total, it'll put you on hold in the general room. But it'll take you to your new group breakout room. And then if you want to go back to the general room, you just click to go back into the general room. But you don't have to, you can hang up your group room and then you can rejoin or you can just put your group room on hold and you can jump back and forth between your group channel room and our general classroom meeting room. So everyone try to go into your group room and then I'm gonna come into each group and make sure everyone was able to get into their group room.
Hello, group two. Okay, so did everyone get a chance to go to their group meeting room, get into that group meeting room, okay? And so Cameron, the purpose of these different channels, which we call group rooms, uh, while we're, uh, when we're discussing uh, chemistry concepts in a particular chapter, um, I have the notes and the practice work uh, packets that I set up in eLearn that I mentioned that I want you to either download or print before each class. Within that note packet, there are problems and questions that we'll work on in class. And so when we get to those problems within a certain section of the notes, I'll ask you to go to your group room and you'll work those problems out and discuss them with your group members. And then we'll come back to the general room and then we'll discuss them together to make sure we all have the same answer. We all in agreement 
with what the correct answer to this question or problem is and have an overall class discussion about it if necessary. So breaking you up into these small groups for problem solving purposes and, and team building purposes, I think is a good idea. And that way, if you want to meet with your group and say, hey, let's, let's form a study group to get ready for uh, the first chapter exam, uh, you guys can meet in your group channel outside of class as a study group. And so it's helpful within our virtual class meeting time to work problems. And it can also function outside of class time for you guys to meet and form a study group to prepare for tests. So that's a very good question, Cameron. So everyone, everyone had a uh, uh, easy time getting into their groups. So Sarah has a question about exams. What are the questions like? Multiple choice or short answer or select all that apply type. Most of the questions are going to be multiple choice. There may be some questions that are fill in the blank uh, style as well, but the majority of your test questions will be multiple choice. Great question. Uh, your chapter exams, you'll have 70 minutes to complete. Your midterm and final, you'll have two hours to complete. Your midterm and final exams are a little bit longer in length. There are 50 questions, whereas your regular chapter exams, I think, are 34 questions. So therefore, you'll get two hours to do the midterm and the final, an hour and 10 minutes to do your chapter exams. But they'll be mostly multiple choice questions. Good question, Shelby. You're gonna be doing all of your tests online at home and you'll go to eLearn, you'll go to test, you'll click on the link um, and it'll take you to the McGraw-Hill Connect site for you to do your test. You'll be doing it on the honor system. Uh, I expect you to do the exam yourself. You can have um, your notes. The tests are open notes. So you can use your notes. You just can't use another person. OK, and so it's on the honor system that you, you and you alone will be working on your test. OK. You're welcome, Shelby. Any other questions about how we'll be doing our tests this semester? They are going to be online and you can do them at home. And I always advise students to make sure you're in a quiet place when you're doing your test and that once you start that test, you have to finish it. You can't start it at 9 a.m. and then come back uh, at 2 p.m. to finish it. The time will expire. You have 70 minutes to do a chapter exam. So once you start it, you need to finish it. But for the chapter exams, you'll have a two day span window of time that you can choose a 70 minute block of time to do your test. So if it's best for you to do your test at midnight when everyone else in your house is asleep, then do your test at midnight. Uh, but knowing that you have 70 minutes to get it done once you start it. Okay, any other questions about exams or e-learn? Good question, Michael. Do you drop the lowest scoring exam or no? Yes, uh, the way I'm doing that is your final exam. Your final exam can replace a low chapter exam. And so you have to take the final and you have to take the midterm, okay? And the three chapter exams, if something happens um, and you had to miss a chapter exam, then your final exam can replace a missed chapter exam or a low chapter exam score. So in essence, yes, Michael, you can drop a low chapter exam score and replace it with your final. As far as the homework, you can drop one homework score 
And as far as the quizzes, you can drop two quizzes. Now, the laboratory component of the course is also important. You have to be registered for a lab section. And the lab counts 25% of your total grade. So you have to attend your lab session each week. And your laboratory reports that you'll turn in each week will be graded. And those combined lab reports, uh, that average is going to count 25% of your grade. Your chapter exams, there are three of them, and those are going to count 25% of your grade as well. Your midterm counts 10%. Your homeworks count 5%. Your quizzes count 10%. And then the final exam itself counts 20%. So if you go to the our eLearn homepage and you go under the course content tab and getting started, under that getting started module, you'll find the syllabus and the syllabus will give you that same breakdown for your grade that I just gave you. How much, uh, as far as percentage, how much each component counts towards your grade. And there's our course syllabus. And sometime this week, take time to read through the syllabus. If there's something in the syllabus you have a question about, please, please email me. If you think that I've got an error in the syllabus somewhere, please email me and let me know. But please go through the syllabus sometime this week. And there's our breakdown of our components and what percentage they weigh towards your overall grade. Any questions about how to locate the syllabus? You can go directly to the course content tab, getting started, and it's there. Or you can go to the news item. There's a link to the syllabus in one of the news items. Now this little handout here, I'm going to click on that link. It's going to take me to that. The little handout also take some time this week to go through this little handout. It has the links to eLearn, to my virtual home, pay, uh, home office page for meeting with you after class, your textbook information, technology requirements, and then how to register for McGraw-Hill Connect is there as well, the grade distribution and scale. And then our schedule for the semester is also shown in this first day handout. So we're going to try to follow this schedule as closely as we can. But we have a little wiggle room. If it takes us a little bit longer to cover a chapter uh, than what's on the schedule, then we have a little bit of, of wiggle room there because the very last week um, I have uh, designated for final exam review. So we've got an extra class meeting time. So we have a little wiggle room, but we're going to try to follow this schedule as closely as possible. We'll get started and get deep into chapter one on Wednesday. But I thought today was very important to just introduce the class. Uh, first, to kind of get comfortable with teams. This is my first semester using teams just like I'm sure it's most of your first semester using Teams as well. So we just kind of want to get the lay of the land today, get comfortable with Teams, get comfortable with our eLearn site, um, make sure that you go through the syllabus on, and the news items and, and uh, other those other items that are under the getting started and introduction modules under the course content tab. 
And then once you go through all that material, you'll be ready to start chapter one. And notice on the schedule, we've got an activity period that's gonna affect our class the week of October 19th. We won't have class that day because the activity hours from 11 to 12, and so that's pretty much all of our class. Um, note fall break is the week of October 12th. And so that Monday of the week of October 12th, we won't have class. And of course, and I forgot about um, Labor Day. <laughs> I forgot to put Labor Day on our schedule. So I'm gonna go back in right after class. I'm gonna modify this and I'm gonna put Labor Day here. And of course, we're not gonna have class on September 7th. That is Labor Day, okay? And then another holiday, of course, is Thanksgiving that will affect our schedule. So no class on the Wednesday of the week of Thanksgiving. And all of our lab sessions are for Thursday and Friday. So the week of Thanksgiving, there will be no lab whatsoever for that week. So keep those dates in mind, those days that we won't be meeting for class due to holiday or due to activity period. And I will revise September 7th and put Labor Day in here, no class on Labor Day as well. And so again, this document can be found under the Getting Started module under the Course Content tab. So, if I asked you, well, what is chemistry? What would you say? Just put a little short reply in the chat box. Just a few words, no more than a sentence. If I asked you to, to define chemistry, how would you define it? Good question, Destiny. No, you do not need a lab kit. And just to give you a little brief synopsis, about lab, like we stated, your lab grade is gonna count 25% towards your final grade. I have, as well as a couple of other instructors in the department, we have performed the lab experiments and we've made videos of ourselves performing the lab experiments. And so just like you're getting used to these groups, these different channels in the lecture, part of the course. I'm glad that I've exposed you to that because you're going to be exposed to that again when you um, join your lab session this week. And again, you'll be put into different lab groups just like you would be if we were on ground. And then you're going to go into your different group uh, breakout room and you guys are going to watch uh, the videos for the labs. And then you're going to discuss the questions and, and problems and calculations that are related to the video that you just watched. And then you're gonna make observations of what you've seen in the video, do any calculations that you need to do, work out any problems, answer any questions that you need to within your group. And then you'll leave the breakout room and you'll come back to the general room and then we'll discuss things. And then we'll go on to the section part B of the experiment. You'll go back to your breakout group room You'll watch the videos for part B with your group. You'll discuss what you saw, write down your data, your observations, work any problems, answer any questions with your group. Then once you're finished with part B, you'll leave your group room, go back to the general room, and then we'll talk about part B, summarize things, introduce part C, and then you'll go back to your group room and finish part C. So that's how lab is gonna work this semester since we can't be on ground. You'll be watching a series of videos that are made um, while either myself or another uh, professor in the department actually performs the lab. And then you'll make your uh, observations, write down your data, do your calculations and, and questions and problems 
so on and so forth. And then you'll upload your uh, lab report sheet to a Dropbox. And so the way I would advise you to handle lab, just like I advised you to download and or print your notes before each class, before each lab, you want to download and print your lab uh, data report forms that will be available on the lab eLearn site, okay? Your lab has its own separate eLearn site uh, apart from the lecture eLearn site. So you'll download your data report sheet for that particular lab for that particular day, and then you'll have that with you when you go in your breakout rooms with your groups, and then you'll write down your observations, record your data, do any questions and problems you need to do. And then at the end of the lab session, you'll, if you have a scanner, you can scan your data, uh, uh, your report sheet, and upload it to the Dropbox as a PDF file. If you don't have uh, access to a scanner, uh, all you need to do then is use your cell phone, take a picture of your uh, report sheet, and upload those pictures to the Dropbox. Okay. So there is no lab kit needed. You don't need to purchase anything for the lab. All you need is your um, your computer, your internet connection, and then download the data report um, forms before your lab session. Okay, any other questions about lab? Okay, Michael asked uh, any extra credit things that you can do. Well, one of the things I thought was um, would be good to do as far as bonus points uh, for your group when we go into the, the breakout rooms and um, if you're present that day, you if your group has worked the problems that we uh, assigned for you to work in the breakout room uh, to give you guys a, give you a half a point per problem, uh, that'll be bonus points that will go on to the next exam. So just showing up for class each day, working problems in your breakout room, you can earn bonus points that will go on to your exams. Great questions, any others? So, any anyone want to uh, give us their personal definition of what chemistry is before we go for the day? Now, to if you want to uh, speak, you want to be recognized, you can wave your hand. So, put your mouse over the general meeting room screen, and there should be a little bar comes up that has the camera the microphone, then the share option, then you should see a hand. If you click the hand, that means you're raising your hand and you're ready to, to speak with us. So if you want to give us a definition for chemistry, raise your hand and please feel free to speak. So what do you think chemistry is the study of? Just a general definition. So in chapter one, we're going to be studying um, many different topics in chapter one, but one of the topics is the classification of matter. And so therefore we can just give chemistry a brief little definition is that it's the study of matter. And so we're gonna talk about matter on Wednesday, how to classify matter. We're gonna talk about different states of matter. And then we're gonna go on to talk about atoms as well as elements, compounds and mixtures some other topics that we're going to talk about in chapter one, scientific notation. I want to talk to you about using a scientific calculator. 
That is one of the things that you must have for both lecture and lab. You're going to need it to do your exams, to do your homework, to do your quizzes. Make sure you have a scientific calculator. You don't need to go out and spend $100 on a calculator. A $15 Texas Instruments um, TI-30X calculator, just like this. This will serve you just fine. And this, depending on where you, you shop, this only costs about 10 to $15. So you don't have to get anything any fancier than this. Yeah. And I want to make sure that everyone is good with using their scientific calculator to do things like put numbers in uh, scientific notation using uh, the base 10 function and exponents and things of that nature. So. If you already have your scientific calculator, have it handy when we join each other again for class on Wednesday. Okay. So if uh, you have any other questions, feel free to just raise your hand or type a question in the chat box. And if not, we will end class for today. But if you want to hang around and ask some more questions, please feel free to do so. Make sure when you join us for class on Wednesday, that you have your chapter one notes downloaded and or printed out and that you'll be ready to go and ready to go into your group breakout rooms to work problems on Wednesday. So those of you, if you don't have any questions and you want to go ahead and leave our meeting, Feel free to do so. Have a great rest of your first day of class classes today. I hope the rest of your classes go well. Please email me any questions that you have between now and Wednesday. And again, have a great rest of your Monday.